thank you for staying with us. We have our special guest of the week, and uh, he's a trained medical practitioner. He trained in Nigeria. He earned a master's degree in health system management in the UK, followed by a residency and an MBA in the United States. He then joined the World Bank through the Young Professionals Program and rose to the rank of acting sector manager before returning home to Nigeria to head the National Primary Health Care Development Agency. He was the Minister of State for Health between 2001, 2011 and 13. Dr. Mohamed Ali Pate is currently the CEO of Big Win Foundation and has a track record of significant leadership in global health with management experience spanning both governmental and non-governmental sectors. The Ondo State Government and the Senate of the University of Medical Sciences Ondo, in his honor, named the school Muhammad Ali Pate International School of Public Health. Dr. Muhammad Ali Pate, good morning and thank you for joining us. He, he, by the way, is in our studio in Abuja. Good morning, Doctor. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you very much for joining us. Yes, thank you for having me. Yes, you'll be discussing public health with us this morning and human capital development. Um, let me start by asking you exactly where do you think our public health is at the moment? Thank you. I think um, first you had mentioned the honor that Ondo State um, Government and the University of Medical Sciences did. I think it's remarkable at this point in our nation's uh, development that the state of Ondo and the people will choose to name the School of Public Health in our honor. But not coming from Ondo State and coming from um, Bauchi in particular uh, to do this significant honor. But when you look at it, Ondo State represents a positive deviant in terms of the public health space in our country. Ondo is one of the only states that achieved the MDGs 4 and 5. It's ranked first on multiple fronts by the World Bank and by various international organizations in terms of what it has done. It represented a state that has had the systems but also the leadership to move the health of its people forward. And that has not been as widely appreciated as I hope it will. So when you come back to the health issue that you've asked in terms of our country, I think we're still struggling in terms of dysfunction within our health system. Health outcomes are not optimal. The quality of care that is available is still very much suboptimal. A case in point is the recent example from Kogi State where a consultant physician died because of lack of oxygen. That's symptomatic of a much wider dysfunction in our health system. So in summary, we still have a lot more that we need to do as a country to improve the health outcomes for our people, to improve the distribution of those health outcomes, to make them more equitable, but to accelerate progress in terms of achieving universal health coverage for our people. Okay. Um, uh, um, from the time that you were the Minister of State for Health, um, okay, moving from the Primary Health Care Development Agency, and now, I know you've been into a lot of things. Um, now you, you talk about um, uh, HIV, tuberculosis, and things like that. Let's look at the health sector in Nigeria. You have been a global player. How can we bring some of this global expertise back to Nigeria? I know a couple of groups doing one thing or the other to, to bring back this expertise. How can we make it faster so that the structure here can be reinforced? It's, it's difficult to isolate the dysfunction that we see in our health system from wider dysfunctions that exist in the context of the Nigerian state. I think um, the technical answer to your question is to do with human resources, financing, allocation, management, and all of that, and to say that the commodities ought to be there. And yes, that's important, but there's a much wider issue 
when you look at the situation of our country today in terms of health, in terms of education, and wider um, developmental issues that face our people. If you look at our politics, if you look at our economy, if you look at education, and you look at health, and even the security issue, those elements are all interrelated. In terms of these issues, there are wicked problems, and I think some of the solutions are much more fundamental, much more structural. So for a very long time, healthcare, we've allocated the most important aspect of our health to the local government areas, which is primary healthcare. And they're the weakest link in the governance chain. The stewardship of our health system and allocation of resources has not been the most efficient. Now, we've seen a portion in our recent history where there was tremendous progress in terms of improving immunization, in terms of polio eradication, in terms of midwifery service scheme, in terms of deploying community health workers to improve that situation. And a state like Ondo, for instance, has done tremendously well, and in fact is the only state that achieved the MDGs 4 and 5 by 2015. And that's testimony to leadership, but also to the systems that the state put in place which other states in our country ought to learn from. And ONDO is a, bench, is a state that has been benchmarked not only in Nigeria, but also in the region, in Africa, but also globally. That's an example that if we want to see how to improve, we have real recent examples that we can copy, but which has not been done as much as it should be. But again, you have to situate it within the much wider set of dysfunctions within uh, our systems of governance. Not to say any particular administration, I don't want to really focus it to one administration or the other, but over the last 20 years, these dysfunctions in our politics, in terms of the leadership, in terms of our economy, in terms of our educational system, as well as the health systems, are really what is uh, behind the poor outcomes in health, and they are also the issues that affect our performance in education. If we go to the education sector, for instance, the same issue also you will see repeats itself. Talking about dysfunctions, um, I think one of the major problems we have in this country uh, concerns maternal and infant mortality. Uh, it is a child who survives, who has enough food for his brain to grow, who can become a useful citizen tomorrow. Um, where are we now in that area of maternal and infant mortality? Are we doing better than we did, say, 10 years ago? I think there's been some recent, uh, there's been some improvement, but it's insufficient. We missed the MDGs, and I think we have to revisit the issue of things like midwives being located in primary health care centers, so the women get quality and genital care and skill bars attendants when they come to deliver. We need to look at the quality of care that is being received in not only the primary health care centers, but the hospitals, so that complicated cases can be dealt with. But we also need to make sure that accountability mechanisms are in place at the community level. So again, back to Ondo State that is, I mentioned as an example, Ondo passed a maternal health law that mandated death reviews. Wherever a mother dies, it mandates a review to look at it. Mothers should not be dying and just be statistics. People should go back and say it's not acceptable to have mothers to die. I think we've seen some progress and some improvement as a nation overall. Uh, when we were in government a few years ago, there was an independent evaluation that looked at the work that was done on maternal and child health, which showed 14% increase in skilled birth attendance over a nine-month period. This was independent. This was published by the World Bank that looked at what the government of Nigeria was able to do. Now, if you situate that, you, you can see that it is possible to make progress.